In this video, we're going to take a look at an accessible Microsoft Word document and identify what makes it accessible. One of the main features of an accessible document is structured headings. So let's think about the user experience for just a moment. Sighted users rely on visual cues such as titles, headings, and captions and images to skim over a document and decide where to focus their attention and which information is most important. A user of a screen reader needs access to the same type of information and adding structured headings is really the key to adding both visual cues and to structure the document with labeled elements that will be identified to the assistive technology user. And as we mentioned before, assistive technology relies on markup for navigation and marked up headings are one of the keys to this. So let's take a look at this document and see where we can add headings or check to see if we do have headings. So one thing that I can do is uh, view the navigation pane. I'm going to go to the view menu and choose navigation pane and this brings up headings within my document. Um, I'm able to browse the headings in my document. So this is an example of a feature that is beneficial for all users. The screen reader announces the headings and enables the user to move through the document from heading to heading. And now that we see that the headings are present, let's go back and we can see where to set up these headings. So now I'm going to go to the home ribbon and I want to go back to the top of my document and I can see now in the styles section that once I have clicked within the text here it is identified as a heading one. Now if I click on normal which is the default style then the text loses all of the formatting and it goes back to the default settings. So I do want this to be a heading one Microsoft Word has a number of default styles built in, but it's good to know that you can customize headings to include the font type, size, color, and style that meets your needs. So to do this, you select the text that you want to make into a heading, go back to the styles section, and I'm going to choose heading one. If I have already formatted the text and I've changed the font type, and the size, then I can choose Update Heading 1 to match selection. This can be really useful. Also, I want to show you that you can uh, choose Modify, and this will bring up a dialog box that will give you the option to set up all of your formatting right within the dialog box. You can select your font type, you can select the size, you can change the color, and the great thing about this is all of these modifications will apply to heading level one styles throughout your document. If your document requires additional heading levels, you would add your heading level two using the same process. So that's how you add heading structure to your document through the use of the built-in styles, which enables you to make your document more accessible and more usable for all users. So now let's take a look at using some other built-in features that will allow you to add additional structure and information to your document. So now you want to make sure that any lists in your document are formatted with the paragraph list tools. Okay. So for bulleted and numbered lists, you would select the text that you want to include in your list and go up to the paragraph section and choose the appropriate style, either bullets or numbers. So for this one, I have chosen bullets. Now, if I select normal, it will uh, take my text back to my default formatting. So that does show that it has been styled with a list styles. For my numbered list, I would use the same process, highlight my text, go to the paragraph styles, and choose the number list um, option that works best for me. And there are a number of choices in here. So that is a pretty simple thing to do that will add some additional accessibility and structure to, to your document. Okay, now we want to make sure that we take a look at the table tools. 
I've already inserted a table into this document. Um, what's really important about the table is that we identify the header row. So I'm going to select the row that contains my header information. I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to go to the table tools on the ribbon and click on layout. And what I want to do here is make sure that I click on repeat header rows. So that's, that's pretty simple, but it's important to the screen reader user. Now, another couple of things to keep in mind about tables. You want to make sure that you use simple table structure, and you can also tab through your table, and that will help you check your uh, reading order and make sure, make sure that there are no blank cells used for spacing purposes within your document. We'll come back and talk a little more about tables in just a moment. Also, again thinking about reading order, if your document contains multiple columns, you want to be sure that the columns are formatted using Word's built-in tools in order to maintain the correct reading order. You do not want to use the tab key to format columns just visually. You do need to make sure that you select your text that will be in, included in your columns and you use the built-in tools under page layout and select the number of columns that you would like to use. Okay, it's also important that uh, hyperlinks are formatted properly. Hyperlink text should provide a clear description of the link destination rather than providing only the URL or text such as click here or read more. Um, hyperlinks need to make sense out of context. As we saw previously, an individual who uses a screen reader can use a command to bring up a list of all of the links in the document. And providing meaningful hyperlinks makes the links much more usable. So Microsoft Word provides the ability to add a URL hyperlink with a field to indicate what text to display. So we can take a look at that here. For this example, um, we have read more, we have the entire URL, which is very long, and then the third choice, which would be the best choice for this particular example, is read more about Microsoft Word accessibility. So that would format the uh, hyperlink with context. An important part of an accessible document is to provide alternative text descriptions to images. Alternative text descriptions, also called alt text, are used to provide a description to an image or other non-text element. And when you're thinking about alt text, first thing you want to do is determine the purpose of the image. You want to think about, is it informational or decorative? If the purpose of the image is to convey information or meaning, you want to determine what information the image is conveying and write a short, concise description that will convey that information. So I have an image here, and I'm going to right-click on the image, and I'm going to choose Format Picture, and then the Alt Text option is listed at the bottom of the left navigation and I'm going to just include information in the description field. Um, if we added information in the title field and the description field for a short image like this, the information could be redundant. And also if I save this file to another file format, only the information that is included in the description field is going to export out to the other format. So just include the information in the description field. I've included something short here. I'm going to click close. And now I have added alt text to my image. Tables often also need alt text descriptions added. Once again, we want to think about the user experience. Sighted users are able to browse through a table to get a general idea of the information, you know, especially a, a long table with a lot of information. And we want to be able to provide uh, users of assistive technology with a similar experience. And adding an alt text summary can, can be helpful. Um, and to do that, we would 
really do it in much the same manner that we used to add the alt text to our image. We're going to select the table, right click, choose table properties, and there is an alt text field. And once again, we want to enter our short summary in the description field. Okay, a couple of other issues that we do want to keep in mind. Um, if your document contains more than one language, you can identify other languages within the Review tab on the ribbon. So let's take a look at that. You go to Review and go to Language and select Set Proofing Language, and this will enable you to mark selected text in various languages that are listed. That's important. A screen reader can read the text in the proper language if the language has been identified. Okay, next we want to think about uh, color and contrast. You don't want to use color as the sole indicator of required information uh, or the sole indicator of any type of information. It's necessary that you use another means of conveying that information as well. For example, you don't want to use the color red as a sole means of identifying required information. You could also add an asterisk and that would also, and a key that would denote which symbols indicate that information is required. There are third party contrast analyzers that can be used to help you evaluate whether the color contrast of your document is appropriate. And this is very important for individuals with low vision. But good color contrast improves readability in general. So you also want to be sure to use color combinations that are accessible to individuals who are colorblind. So once again, improved color contrast and improved color choices can improve usability for most users. Microsoft Word 2010 has a built-in accessibility checker that will inspect your document and produce a report noting any accessibility errors and warnings, such as missing alt text and unclear hyperlinks. So to access the accessibility checker, you go to File, and we're going to select Prepare for Sharing, Check for Issues, and then we are going to choose Check Accessibility. And what this does is it uh, will generate a report with uh, your inspection results, including errors and warnings. What's great about this tool is that it will link you directly to the issue in your document. And not only will it tell you, uh, you know, where the problem is, it also will tell you why you want to fix this problem. And it will also show you how to fix it. So, this is a very useful tool for both flagging potential problems and fixing those problems before you share your document. So my first error listed here is that there is a picture missing alt text. If I select on picture eight, it will select my picture within my document and I can go through and add my alt text. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, creating an accessible PDF from an accessible Microsoft Word document. Microsoft Word 2010 includes the option to save and export accessible formatting, including the headings, the alt text, your formatted list, and your formatted tables when you save your document as a PDF. To export your Word doc to an accessible PDF format, go to File, choose Save As, and from the Save As Type drop-down menu, we want to choose PDF, and then we have some additional options. Click on Options. You want to be sure that you go to the section that says uh, include non-printing information and I'm going to select create bookmarks using headings. I want to be sure to include document properties and I want to make sure that I have a check in the uh, selection document structure tags for accessibility. So I'm going to click OK 
and now I can save my document uh, as an accessible PDF, which is great. Uh, it will open up and I can, I can go through this and I can see that I have bookmarks and there's additional information that uh, is included here. Uh, any alt text will pop up. So that is a great feature that is available in Microsoft Word 2010. It's also available in PowerPoint, and it's available in Microsoft Word uh, 2013 as well.